Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here with a video from My Favorite Things. This video is part of the September release and I'm going to be creating a card based off of the card that I just shared that was created by design team member Karen. And this is a watercolor card that we're going to be creating with the new etched flower background stamp. So I have my stamp positioned on my table and I'm just going to go ahead and completely cover it with Versamark ink. And then I also have a piece of watercolor paper there ready to be stamped on. So I'm just going to make sure I get the stamp fully covered and then I just laid my watercolor piece directly on top and I'm just going to use my fingertips to kind of hold it with one hand and then use my fingers to press down on the whole cardstock piece so that I know that we get a really good stamped impression because we're going to go ahead and heat emboss this with white embossing powder. So once I have it fully stamped, I'm just adding all of my white embossing powder and I just try and hold the paper kind of on the side since this is fully covering that whole panel. You don't want to put your fingers in the embossing powder and kind of knock it off. So I tend to hold on to the side area and that seems to work well. So now that I have all the embossing on there, I went ahead and heated it with my heat gun. And you can't really see anything right now because it's white on white, but you're going to see as we go ahead and do some water coloring, you're going to see the images appear on this card. So I just have a watercolor set here and I'm just using my paintbrush first with the water and adding some water into the areas that I'm going to be painting first. And the good thing about adding the water first is it allows you to kind of just touch your paintbrush into the color and then touch the areas with the water and it helps the, everything to kind of spread out and fill that area. And because we've done the heat embossing, the embossed is kind of raised so it helps to keep the water and the color inside the little areas that you're adding the color and water to. So now you can see I just went ahead and finished filling all the areas with water and then I picked up a light blue color and I'm just adding that into the little areas. And if you feel like you get too much color or you feel like it's a little bit more um, saturated than you wanted it to be, just take a paper towel and kind of dip it into the little puddle of water and it will absorb that water right up and it won't, it won't make it spread all over. It'll just kind of suck it up and then you don't have any problems. And then if you feel like you took too much back, you can just kind of go ahead and add more color back in. So what I'm doing here now is while it's still wet, I'm taking a darker color, a different color, still in blues, but a little bit darker, and I'm adding that to the bottom areas of those pools of blue that I had already created. And this is just a great way to kind of have two colors mixed together on your card, but while it's still wet, it really helps the colors blend together. So it just adds a lot of depth and, to, and dimension to your finished image because it has the two-tone color and it really provides a lot of shading. So I'm doing the same thing with my flowers here. I have a lighter color that I'm using to kind of completely cover the whole flower image. And then I'm taking a darker pink color and adding that to the bottom areas as well as kind of in the middle areas of these flowers. And now I'm going to do the same thing and add some purple for a little bit of contrast. Now I didn't have a second purple color that was darker in color, so I just kind of put more color at the bottom and let it, with less water, and just let it be more saturated, and that helped to kind of give a little bit of a darker purple color. And then once I had the purple ones done, I went around to some of the pink flowers and just added more color, but with a lot more water, and that allowed me to give that lighter color on the outside edges of the flowers. And now you can see here I've let this sit and dry and I have this whole panel completely watercolored with this great shadow and dimension because I've used two colors and just kind of mixed them together to create a little bit of darker areas and the lighter areas which is what really makes this pop out and makes these flowers look really realistic. So now that I have the panel all finished, I'm going to go ahead and just assemble a card. I cut mine out with a rectangle die um, and I'm just going ahead and creating a white card base and I'm going to adhere this watercolored panel to a piece of black cardstock first before adhering it to the white. And this is just going to make it really pop off of the card. Now because this is a watercolor piece, it's very warped from the water and the heat embossing that we did first. So I went ahead and made sure to add a lot of adhesive to this. I don't normally use that much adhesive on a cardstock panel, but because it is warped, um, I wanted it to lay completely flat and the adhesive helps to do that. So I just mounted it onto my black piece of cardstock and then I'm going to go ahead and mount that um, finished piece onto my white card base. And this is a top folding card base. And then to finish the card off, we're going to add a sentiment. Now this is a pretty busy background and it has a lot of color to it. So I love that Karen just kind of decided to use one word and just use a die to cut it out of black cardstock. Because one, it ties into that mat that we've put behind the color so it kind of pulls in with that black that we've put there. And it's a nice bold sentiment with a dark black piece of cardstock that really helps it to stand out against this 
bold, colorful background that we've created. So I love that she thought to do it that way rather than trying to cover up the background with some kind of banner or anything like that. I like that the background is fully exposed but you still have a nice bold sentiment. So I just went ahead and used liquid adhesive to add that on and then just pushed it down to make sure it was adhered and that completes the card. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Karen for this great inspiration and we'll see you next time.